In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the image settings on your NVR to adjust the image settings from your cameras. This will determine how well your cameras can see in certain conditions or if you need to modify those image settings to see better in certain conditions. So first I'm going to right click. I'm going to click the menu button. It's going to log me in. If you're not already logged in, then you may have to enter the graphical user password. It's just the backward C found in our other login video and some of our other videos. Here you can see when I log in to the menu, it brings me to the camera registration page. On the left hand side, you'll see a couple of different tabs here. We have encode, that was covered in the encoding settings video. We have the OSD, which would show what displays on the cameras, but this particular video cares about the image settings. As you can see, this tab here is called image, so we'll click that to get to the image setting. So this is our first camera channel. It's a 4 megapixel camera set to 25 frames per second. But here is the preview image from this camera. And this is going to show us or let us see what kind of changes we're making to this camera. Here you can see there is an image scene selection. It has general, indoor, custom, road highlight compensation, WDR, which stands for wide dynamic range, and then park highlight compensation. These are pre-made presets for image settings. So the general setting is just this. It's just a general, very kind of bright setting. Um, it just kind of looks how it does outdoors right now. It's very sunny out, just a kind of sunny picture here. Now depending on this camera, if it were shining through glass at night, if there were going to be headlights uh, pointed at it throughout the night, uh, or during the day if there's some glaring happening that's really kind of making this camera unable to see far uh, that's where you would kind of try to adjust some of these settings um, and just to say for image scene WDR uh, we'll go ahead and select that it says it will change our image settings we'll click yes to continue what this is going to do is set it into WDR mode or wide dynamic range mode as you can see it kind of changed the way this image looked the foreground is now a lot lighter than it was with the general setting and then the background is kind of uh, almost washed out, but not quite. Um, but what this camera did was it set it to the wide dynamic range mode where it tried to compensate for the darkness in front of the camera and highlight that and then maybe dim or saturate the, the f background image so that you could see this bush closer. To demonstrate this difference, I'm going to set it back to the general mode and notice how the bush gets much darker after we change it back from the WDR mode. So we've went ahead and set the mode. The camera has gone ahead and adjusted it, and now these leaves and this bush are much darker. You can't see them very well. So the WDR mode really helps for when your background and foreground have very different lighting scenarios and you want to even that lighting out between those two uh, kind of parts of your image. Again, the foreground and the background having different levels of lighting, you can use the WDR mode to help compensate for that. Another one is the headlight, uh, road highlight or park highlight compensation. These are for when headlights are coming into the camera's view. Uh, usually results in a darker overall image uh, just to uh, compensate for those other external lights coming. As you can see, this is not a nighttime picture, so we can't really tell the difference between general and these highlight compensations, uh, but that's what those are there for. Uh, they're also called headlight compensation or HLC if you're familiar with that term. For road highlight compensation you can see the image is much darker uh, when compared. The main real thing you can do here otherwise is go to the custom image scene setting and we'll click that. It's going to change it over to custom here. And here's where we can make fine adjustment to our brightness, saturation, contrast, sharpness, noise reduction, or rotate the image. So for example, I could cut down the brightness. It's going to make my photo a little darker. Bring it back to kind of the normal setting here, saturation. It's going to get rid of some of the color. I could turn saturation all the way up. It's going to make everything a lot more vibrant, a lot more colorful, and a little kind of cartoony. So I'll kind of tone that back down to a normal setting. Contrast is the amount of black and white you have in your picture can drastically affect it. Here you can see it kind of dulls everything out. And then I do it all the way here and it kind of puts an overlay over my video uh, trying to do a whiter contrast and we'll just set that back to normal. Here's sharpness. We can make the pixels a lot sharper. 
it can't really notice it a whole lot from the preview, or you can make them a lot smoother. Um, now you can see it got a little blurrier, a little brighter, um, kind of washes out some of those finer edges when you turn the sharper sharpness down. So we'll go ahead and turn, return sharpness to a regular level. Uh, last but not least is noise reduction. This is more so for at nighttime uh, when you have the IR lights on and black and white image. Uh, you can adjust the noise reduction and kind of finely tune these image settings as needed for certain scenarios. Again, this primarily relates to the amount of lighting that you have um, and what will the camera will be capturing. If it's street lamps, uh, you'll expect a lot of noise. If it's headlights, there won't be too much noise. Um, but all of these settings will need to be adjusted for that view. As, at the top, beyond those basic adjustments, there are some more advanced adjustments. The second tab here being exposure. Um, exposure mode, you're usually going to want to set this to automatic unless you have uh, too dark of a picture or it's too bright. Um, and those other basic settings don't alleviate that. Then you can come in here, set it to custom and then mess with the shutter and gain. Like I mentioned, you're better off leaving these as automatic. The camera does have an algorithm to try and compensate for those things automatically, and there's not much you really need to do. Um, if you do have a license plate camera, uh, then you would certainly want to make these fine adjustments, but for regular um, image capture, leave them alone. Um, at the bottom here, we do have day and night mode. This is what controls the IR lights. Uh, you can set it to day or night mode. That's also going to set up your image settings. Um, and then th this will also be based off of a schedule. You can also schedule this uh, based on your uh, daylight and nighttime schedule. Um, here's WDR. We can turn this on or off rather than using the image scene mode, the automatic one. We could turn WDR off if we wanted to see the color on this bush a little better and then you can of course adjust the WDR level you can increase it it's going to make it really bright you could decrease it it's going to kind of lower some of that saturation and darkness but still have some ability to make the foreground brighter than the background and kind of even that image out we're going to return this to the kind of middle setting here and then turn it off the next tab is the Smart Illumination. This is Smart IR. Uh, this is another type of IR control. Again, this was just for your day and night profiles, which can also affect if your IR is on or off. But the Smart Illumination is where you can really choose and um, play around with the Smart II features. So overexposure, restrain, global mode, or manual. Um, basically what these do is when an object gets closer and IR light is reflecting off of it, it will make adjustments and, auto and uh, again it has an algorithm to make adjustments on the fly. Um, as an object comes closer and starts reflecting that IR back into the camera's image, the image will then adjust automatically for that light reflecting back into it, maybe lower the contrast, lower the, the, the shutter rate. Um, that way there's not light flooding into the camera sensor and, and blurring the entire photo out. Uh, the next tab here is white balance. I've gone ahead and went to white balance. This kind of is the color image settings that you can do here. There's a few automatic settings like auto, um, presets like fine tune, outdoor, sodium lamp would be really good if you have a lot of street lamps um, that are kind of making your image look orange or washed out. You can set it to the sodium lamp mode. It's going to try to compensate for that. Um, but for this, for the most part, you usually want to want to leave it on auto. Uh, the camera does have algorithms that try to adjust color based on the amount of light and, and color uh, within the view. Uh, so like my the red car here versus the, the white vehicle here, it tries to make sure that these stay true uh, to their real life values. Uh, we could go ahead and just move these on a manual or lock setting, um, but I'll leave them as auto as the camera usually does a good job at that. Uh, the last tab here is advanced. It's for defog. Um, this sets the camera into a mode. Uh, if there is fog on the, the glass or something like that, it'll try to adjust the image settings to make it a little sharper, try to see through that fog. Um, most of the time you don't have to worry about fog because these cameras kind of produce their own heat. Uh, they'll, they'll make that uh, moisture go away um, after some time. Last but not least, if you've gone ahead and changed your image settings and are not sure how to get back to the default after you've maybe messed around a little too much and have a really awkward looking image, you can always come down here to the bottom left hand side and click the default button. What the default button is going to do is going to set that particular image scene that you've selected 
and set it back to the default automatic settings that were set originally. Hopefully this video helped you get a decent understanding of all of these image settings that are available from the NVR to a camera. Thank you for watching.